Assalamu alaikum and a very good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Zaki bin Mas'ud. I will be your instructor for this part 4, topic 2. In this topic, I'm going to explain to you the cryptography method on the transformation. Nowadays, the most modern cipher are use a sequence of binary digits that is 0 and 1. Okay, such as the S key. This bit sequence representing the plain text is then encrypted to give the cipher tag has a bit sequence. The encryption algorithm may act on a bit string in a numbers of way. It's either using either stream cipher or the block cipher. In the stream cipher, we are actually encrypting the bit by bit. And for the block cipher, normally we're going to divide the block or a block of bits into a predetermined size. As key requires 8 bit to represent one character, and so for a block or cipher that has 64 bit blocks, the encryption algorithm acts on 8 characters at once. Since most modern algorithms operate on a binary string, we need to be familiar with a method combining two bits called exclusive OR and often written as XOR. These are the example of using XOR. If you can see, you're going on to only have one if you have a different bit occurs. Classification of the cipher in form of transformation. Cipher have two classification that are stream cipher and block cipher. The stream cipher, they convert one symbol of plain text immediately into a symbol of ciphertext depend on a symbol key and control information of the encipherment algorithm. Where else? The block cipher encrypt a group of plain text symbol as one block. Example are transposition cipher in columnar transposition. The entire message is translated as one block. Block size need to have any particular relationship to the size of the character. In the stream cipher, first the plain text is enciphered bit by bit. The value of each bit is changed to an alternative value or leave unchanged. If a bit is unchanged twice, it returns to its original value. Next, the encryption key is often called a key stream sequence. Plain text, ciphertext, and key stream are all a binary sequence. And a decryption can be defined as PI, which represents in the plain text, equal to CI, which is a ciphertext, plus the key. P, K, and C are respectively the plain text key stream and ciphertext bits in position I. A stream cipher takes a short key to generate a long key stream, and this is achieved by using a binary sequence generator. For a block cipher, for a block cipher, the bit string is divided into blocks of a given size and the encryption algorithm acts on the block to produce a cryptogram block that for most symmetric cipher has the same size. Block cipher have many applications such as can be used to provide confidentiality, integrity, or user authentication. There are a few obvious properties that a strong block cipher should possess. One of it is a diffusion properties which a small change in a plain text, maybe one or two position, should produce an unpredictable change in the cipher text. Confusion properties. If an attacker is conducting an exhaustive key search, then there should be no indication that they are near to the correct key. And to prevent divide and conquer attacks, we require completeness, which each bit of a cipher text must depend on every bit of the key. Statistical testing form as a fundamental component of the assessment of blocks. An example of the block cipher is the message authentication code. In the message authentication code, there is a key depend on one-way hash function. Only someone with the identical key can verify the hash. Max can be used to authenticate file between user to determine in this file have been altered. If you look at the illustration, the input fox, if you apply the hash function, is going to give you a unique hash sum value. Where else, if you add some other words into the fox, it's going to generate a different unique hash sum. And if you just change one words in the text, it also is going to give you a different or a unique value of a hash sum. Another example is the digital signature which is used for a message from a particular sender is cryptographic value that depend on the message and the sender. 
it is also provide data integrity and the proof of origin or non-repudiation in which it will actually prove that the sender is the right person who he claimed to be. A basic principle of digital signature uh, for a digital signature scheme based on the RSA or LGAMO, each user has a private key that only they can use it or its use is accepted as identifying them. And there is no corresponding public key. There is a corresponding public key and anyone who knows this public key can check that the corresponding private key has been used but cannot determine the private key value. This gives the receiver assurance of both the origin and content of the message. In order to create a digital signature using RSA, the first you need to asymmetric cryptographic processing require much of computational processing. Thus, a condensed version of hash or the message is produced by applying a hash function to the message. The signature is produced from the hash which represents the message. And by using the asymmetric algorithm with the private key, thus only the owner of the private key can generate the signature. One is being receiving, uh, received by the receiver. The signature can be verified by anyone who knows the corresponding public key. To do this, a value is produced from the signature using an asymmetric algorithm with the public key and this value should be the hash of the message which anyone can calculate. If this value and the hash agree, the signature is accepted as a genuine. Well guys, that is the last slide of this session. Hope this sharing session has given you some new knowledge. See you next time. Assalamualaikum and a very good day.